Right. Yeah. And so I told him, I was like, listen, I was like, just because I didn't read the book doesn't mean that I don't know what it's about. <laughs> right. And, <clears throat> what was wrong? <clears throat> story time. Story, story, story time. Is that, oh, that's today? Oh man, oh man. Okay, listen. Um, all right, let me get to story time and I'll finish telling you what happened after that. So um, all right, so Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu salam ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabaw liyawm al-deen. Assalamu alaikum everybody. Welcome to another episode of Stories of the Prophets. As you recall, probably, we've been going over the story of Musa for several weeks. We've been taking some bite-sized episodes of the uh, story of Prophet Musa alayhi salam. And uh, if you remember, we led all the way up to where Fir'aun was and his army were, uh, were chasing him and his people and the people of Bani Israel, they got to the Red Sea and Musa alayhi salam struck the sea with his staff, with his stick, and the sea parted for them. And they got across and the people of uh, Fir'aun were drowned in the, in the sea. Um, so now this is where we pick up the story for today. So now all of them are across the sea. They've, um, or all of the people of Bani Israel, they've just crossed. And after they cross, something very curious happens. When they cross the sea and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them, they now notice that there's a group of people who are worshiping idols, right? You think, okay, what's the big deal? They, you know, they're worshiping idols and um, you know, the people of Musa now they were saved by Allah and they, they, they're following Musa alayhi salam. And so they should know better. But as soon as they see all these idols, they're like, you know what, Musa, uh, we want you to make some idols like this and, and appoint some idols for us to worship. Subhanallah. Like you think that after everything they went through, they were just saved from Firaun. They just saw perhaps the greatest miracle in the history of the world if at least one of them, uh, when the sea split in front of them, and now they want idols to worship after uh, everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did for them. So Musa alayhi salam is like, you know, you are completely ignorant. All of you are completely ignorant. Um, and so he tells them, he says, all of these people, they're wrong in what they're doing, this, this worshiping of the idols. This is going to be their destruction. This is going to be their end, and you're asking me to do the same thing for you? And so, um, you know, one time the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was, this was very early stages of Islam and he was traveling with some of the companions and some of them, they saw uh, some people that were, they had the, this tree and they would go and they would hang their swords on this tree to get baraka, like to get blessings for their swords. Like meaning this tree was going to give them victory if they fought and they would hang wishes up on this tree and they would say, oh, this tree is going to help their wishes come true. And so some of the, the companions of the time, they, they saw this and they told the Prophet Sallallahu you know, make us something like this so that we could do the same thing. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told them, don't be like the people of Musa who did that when they crossed the sea and when they, when they saw others basically committing shirk, um, associating partners with Allah, giving credit to other than Allah for who's going to answer their prayers. Um, who they should worship. Um, and, then, and then remember what we've been saying that every single messenger has come with the same message to worship Allah and Allah alone. This is the same message that all of the messengers of Allah had, have come with. Worship Allah and Allah alone. So Musa alayhi salam, he says to them, don't you remember that we saved you from Musa, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved you from, Fir, from Fir'aun, sorry. Um, so worship Allah alone. And so, um, so they back off for now. And that, um, now they want some food and drink. They've just gone on this journey. They've just crossed the sea. And so they ask Musa alayhi salam, we want you to pray to Allah, make dua to Allah for some food or for some water for us. So Musa alayhi salam takes his staff um, and he goes to quench their thirst he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to take his staff and to strike this big rock. And so from this rock came 12 springs of water. And so the people, um, there were 12 different tribes and they all knew, the, these are from the descendants of the 12 
brothers between Yusuf alayhi salam and his his 11 brothers so everyone knew what tribe they were and they knew what spring of water was theirs so they all went and they drank um they drank from this from these springs that came from this huge rock um and so now they went and they asked for some shade and some food and so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided them shade and he gave them al man wa salwa. This is like some grains and a type of bird that they could eat. And um, and so as they're eating, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a message to Musa alayhi salam. So all of these stories, everything that's mentioned here, these are mentioned in different parts throughout the Quran. So some of the order may be, may be different. So we don't know the exact um, chronology of the, of the story, but we know that everything happened in proximity to each other. So kind of a, around the same time. So as they're eating, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a message to Musa alayhi salam. Um, and remember when Musa told his people, remember the favors of your Lord upon you. He not only saved you from the Pharaoh, but he made from among you the kings and the prophets. Meaning, look, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed your lineage Bless you. from your lineage, the kings and the prophets are coming from your lineage. And he has given you what he didn't give others of your time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave, um, gave them all these blessings. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us an order. Musa alayhi salam is reminding his people. Allah has given us an order. And so what is this order? He says, oh my people, there's this land known as Jerusalem. He says, enter into this blessed land, land of Jerusalem and do not turn back. We will be victorious over the people there, meaning they're going to overtake it. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make, give us victory over the people there. Um, and if we turn back, then we will be from among the losers. So let's go and enter into this land of Jerusalem. And, um, and so the people said to Musa, you know, Salam, Musa alayhi salam, they said, you know, this land has people who are um, Jabbarin, they're, they're oppressors, um, they're powerful people. How can we go in there? They said, you know what, we're not going to go in. You, you go and, um, and we'll meet you when you come out. And when you come out, maybe then we'll enter. You know, they're powerful, they're going to harm us. So subhanAllah, look, they're already disobe disobeying Musa alayhi salam. SubhanAllah, look, they had nothing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them from this powerful army of Fir'aun. They had, they were in a bind and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got them out of it. They were backed from, they, behind them is the army, in front of them is the sea. When they think they, they, there's nothing they can do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala parts the sea for them. They see all of these things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does for them. And now they see some people and they say, you know what? No, Musa, you know, you go, um, you and your Lord, you go and, and, um, and we're going to stay back. So he tried to convince them again, Musa alayhi salam. And they said, they said to Musa alayhi salam, go, you and your Lord, we're going to be sitting down right here. We're going to be sitting down right here. We're not going anywhere. After you've defeated them, then we're going to come. So Musa alayhi salam said, oh, my Lord. And he says to Allah, he says, I don't have command over any of them except for me and my brother Harun. So separate us from, from these people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that it is going to be prohibited for those people to have a dwelling for 40 years. Meaning they didn't want to enter into Jerusalem, into their new home. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it, made it prohibited for them to have a dwelling and a place to live for 40 years. So they're just wandering around. They would get up in the morning. They would look for a place. They have their men with salwa. They have their grains and their food and their water. And they would get up in the morning and they would go and search for a dwelling. And they would find nothing. And they wouldn't be able to go into Jerusalem because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade it for them. So they would come back and they would come back right where they started at the end of the day. So Musa alayhi salam, he would say, oh Allah. I would like some laws to govern my people. And so some, some time had passed. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed Musa alayhi salam to fast in seclusion for 30 days. And then he added another 10 days. So for 40 days. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed Musa alayhi salam 
that after that we should meet and meet in this in the same spot that we initially met this valley of Tua. and so he would go to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give him the commandments and the laws for the people so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to put Harun in charge Harun alayhi salam his brother in charge of the people while Musa alayhi salam was away so Musa alayhi salam went to Harun his brother alayhi salam and he said watch over them be good and upright and do not follow those who are causing mischief there's people who are causing trouble don't follow them so take care of take care of the these people then Musa alayhi salam left and he went to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when he went he went early to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so when Musa alayhi salam met his lord and he spoke to him he said oh Allah he said i completely believe i completely he has no doubts in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but I want to see your face. I want to see you. It's not because he has doubts in Allah, but he wants to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Musa alayhi salam, you cannot see me. You won't be able to see me. He said, but look at this mountain. If it remains in its place, then you're going to be able to see me. So he sees this mountain and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala released some of his nur onto this mountain and the mountain collapsed and crumbled into pieces and Musa alayhi salam he fainted he fell unconscious so that when when Musa alayhi salam regained his consciousness he said glory be to you O oh Allah I seek forgiveness O oh Allah forgive me uh, for, for asking of that which he didn't have the knowledge of and he says I am from the first I am the first from among the believers so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said O oh Musa I have chosen you to give you this revelation and we have spoken to you. So he's the one who's spoken to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he gives him these tablets, these 10 commandments. And so 40 days had passed. And so Musa alayhi salam, he's now taking these tablets, these new laws and rules. And he's now going back to Harun alayhi salam and Bani Israel, his people. And so while Musa alayhi salam was gone, in that period of time that he was gone, there was a man by the name of Samiri. And he went to his people, he got some dust, and he said, this dust is from the hoof, uh, the hoof of, of the horse of Jibril. I saw Jibril, the angel Jibril, and I saw him on his horse and I took some of the dust from, from the hoof of the horse. And so Samari then told everyone, come and bring all your jewelry that you had gotten from the Pharaoh. He said, this jewelry is not pure, so we're going to have to melt it down, throw it in the fire, and I'll put this dust that came from the hoof of the, of the horse of, of Jibril, and we'll put it all together. And so they took all of this gold and this jewelry and this dust, and they formed it into a golden calf. What are they going to do with it? Not something good. So this golden calf, because they didn't have a ton of jewelry, a ton of gold, it was hollow from the inside. And have you ever taken like a bottle that's empty and you blew on the edge of the bottle and you hear this kind of sound, like a, this wind, um, sound when it's hollow. So the, this calf that they made because it was hollow was making this sound, was making this wind blowing sound when wind would blow on it. So people would think that this must mean there's a, a God in it. And what did they do with this calf? They started to worship it. SubhanAllah. After everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did for them. Eventually they are forgiven. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ثُمَّ عَفَوْنَ عَنْكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eventually forgave them. But they said, when they saw this, they said, this is a god. And then they started to worship this calf. Um, and they said, you know, this is while Musa alayhi salam was gone. And they said, we're just going to worship it at least until Musa alayhi salam comes back. So when Musa alayhi salam came back, he was very angry. And he went, to who first? His brother Harun. He went and grabbed Harun by his head and his beard. 
And he said, why didn't you stop them from doing this? You saw that they were going astray. They're, they're uh, committing shirk, associating partners with Allah, worshiping idols. Why didn't you stop them from doing this? And so Harun said, oh, my brother, don't grab me from my beard and my head. I was worried that if I was harsh to them, then I would have split them up. People would have been divided. And I didn't want you to come back and ask me why I've divided the people. So I just wanted to hold off until you came back. So then Musa alayhi salam goes to Samari and he asked him, he said, why, do you, why did you do this? And so Samari says to Musa, he's very unapologetic, but he says, I saw something that no one else saw. I saw this, um, the angel Jibreel on his horse and, and you know, he, of course he's hallucinating or, um, and so he says, or, or lying, who knows? He says, and then I saw this dust from the hoof of the, of the horse and I picked up this dust. I got a handful of this and my own nefs, my own soul told me that I should put this all together and form a God. This is what I thought. This is what I thought was would be a good idea. So Musa alayhi salam ordered him to leave. He banished him. He said, leave. He said, from now on, for the rest of your life, you will only be able to say and utter one thing. And that is, do not touch me. That's, that's all he could say. So he was, you know, with diseases and people would, anyone would come next to him. He would say, do not touch me. That's all he could say for the rest of his life. And he told him, he said, and you have an appointed time and place that will never miss you. Meaning you are going to meet Allah and you are going to answer for the crime that you've committed. So Musa alayhi salam said, look at the God that you were worshiping. He told that he told the people, now look at this calf, this golden calf. He said, we will melt it and throw it into the sea. And, and again, a reminder of the same message that all the prophets had, do not worship anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Musa alayhi salam goes to his people and he reminded them of everything that they went through. And he now is telling them about the commandments to govern, the rules and the laws. But now these people didn't want to follow the commandments that Musa alayhi salam brought them. And so what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decide to do to them? Or what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do to them? Inshallah, next time we will finish this, this story and, and, and let you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did to those who weren't following him and weren't following Musa alayhi salam. Um, let's go ahead and end with a poem. I came across a fun poem, so I'm going to pull it up. Inshallah. Uh, and this poem goes like this. This one's called, Be Glad Your Nose Is On Your Face. Be glad your nose is on your face, not posted in some, not pasted in some other place. For if it were where it is not, you might dislike your nose a lot. Imagine if your precious nose were sandwiched in between your toes. That clearly would not be a treat, for you'd be forced to smell your feet. Your nose would be a source of dread were it attached atop your head. It soon would drive you to despair, forever tickled by your hair. Within your ear, your nose would be an absolute catastrophe. For when you were obliged to sneeze, your brain would rattle from the breeze. Your nose instead, through thick and thin, remains between your eyes and chin not pasted on some other place. Be glad your nose is on your face. Um, so that was a fun poem that I came across. Jazakallah khairan everyone for joining today. And inshallah, we will see you next time. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.